The North American Indigenous Games is a multi-sport event, but it's really bigger than that. It, it's an experience. It's sport competition, but also the celebration of culture for Indigenous people. The games are life-changing. A lot of the places that we go to are places where in history, Indigenous people have not been able to practice their culture and, and looked on down upon. So creating that environment where it's a supportive environment for them to share their culture and people want to know about it, it's hugely impactful for them and the seven generations beyond them. In our planning, it was really important for us to remove as many barriers as possible so they could just focus on athleticism, on competition, and on, on celebrating everything in between that. The games mean a lot to me because I was able to participate in many different ways, first as an athlete and then as a mission staff and now as the host society. And for me, the games were able to allow me to celebrate being an Indigenous person, being an Indigenous woman. It taught me to, to celebrate who I am. So we worked quite closely with Esri Canada to really create this process of planning out the venues and using the ArcGIS online tool that allowed us to create all of the maps for all of our venues, which included the exterior, but also the interior. And from that, we could plan out all of our spaces and all of the items we needed to actually put in those spaces. So as we're putting things together in our warehouse and separating them by venue and by sport, it was very easy to be able to look up and go, you know, you need nine tables, there is nine there, or eight tables, and to be able to change that instantaneously and comment to someone, the impacts is, is hard to express of how big it was. In addition to setting up our, our venue spaces, we were actually able to plot all of our pageantry and all of our wayfinding signage throughout the venues as well. It was really important for us to make sure that the placement of each of those signs were, were critically planned so that people could understand how to make their way through the venues and where they needed to be. If we didn't have the plan and tools from Esri Canada, it would have made our job a lot more difficult. So the fact that the apps that we partnered with Esri Canada on were able to create efficiencies for us in planning our spaces. It really allowed us to focus on the details that mattered for the athletes, to create those experiences for them and to create those safe spaces for them as well. The work we do here at Esri Canada is really important and it's very exciting to be able to see its application in the real world. Those of us who work for Esri Canada understand the power of GIS to solve real world problems. But the really exciting piece is enabling other people to see the power of the GIS and location intelligence to see the bigger picture that maybe people haven't seen uh, or can't see through looking at spreadsheets or, or Word documents. As an Indigenous person, to be in a city where you're usually the minority, but you look around and there's 5,000 other people that look like you, that sound like you, that have similar experiences to you, it's really a truly empowering feeling. To be able to bring those games to Jabukduk, to Halifax, to Mi'kma'ki, we're hoping that we're able to share that with the 5,000 Indigenous participants that came here. But not only that, we're hoping to extend beyond that and to share that with all of the people who were able to attend the games, Indigenous or non-Indigenous. I think whether you're Indigenous or non-Indigenous, there's a lot you can learn from these games. And it, it's a good way to connect people. As you can see from the video, uh, the North American Indigenous Games happened July 15th through 23rd here in Jibuktuk and across Nova Scotia. There were 16 sports within, uh, within 21 venues. How did we help here at Esri Canada? In the summer of 2022, Esri Canada entered into a sponsorship agreement 
with the North American Indigenous Games. We started working with the venue planning team and learned what was required to manage all of the location inventory during the games. The staff needed a venue plan that could be shared across the organization and to members of the public volunteering at the games. They wanted to move away from paper-based workflows to stand, a standardized way of visualizing inventory locations, signage, and pageantry for the venues. The list of items at each location was extensive. It included chairs, it included tables, laptops, radios, water stations, tents, pens, paper, and the list goes on. The locations included both interior and exterior spaces. A map showing the different floor plans was required. Our partner at East Point Engineering was able to help provide those important details and floor plans. Who was the audience that these, were, these applications were created for? They were the North American Indigenous staff, the lead volunteers, and the venue volunteers. The North, it was the duty of the North American Indigenous staff to map every single point um, for the venue map and provide details as to what items was required at each of those inventory locations. The lead volunteers then took that information when they entered into the interior spaces and started to update those data points. And finally, the venue volunteers who went to kit out the spaces um, uh, used the maps and all the tables, associated tables, to help them uh, during kit out and take down. The Esri Canada team worked very closely with the venue staff members throughout the year to ensure that the applications and workflows would work for them. The staff members mapped inventory locations at each of the venues and used the tools to calculate the total number of items that were required for the event. In total, they mapped 892 inventory locations. How did they do this and what did it look like? And here we um, can show the application itself. The applic they use the application in the office to plan each venue by first zooming into the location of interest and then selecting um, the from the inventory list the, the, the type of inventory they were they were to map. So there are several different categories. There was athlete services, there was culture, sports, volunteer, um, general and other, and assign it an access control. These were all defined by the different colors. When, within each of these categories, there was different types, such as athlete drop-off area, athlete access control, athlete entrance. Once plotted on the map, they were able to then fill out the, the details in relation to that particular inventory location and what was required there. Survey123 was utilized to standardize this, this um, workflow through the introduction of, of pick lists um, and logic uh, and automation uh, throughout. Months leading up to the games, the, the inventory staff actually started to train those lead volunteers in how to update the, the uh, inventory locations. Lead volunteers were assigned to update interior spaces with the number of tables and the number of chairs. So if we browse to the RBC Center, we can see that the map now becomes a floor aware map where we can select between level one and level two. As we select each level, the inventory locations update. The, the volunteers came into the system, they selected an area and they updated, they updated the point with the quantity of tables and the quantity of chairs. The final week leading up to the games, these, the inventory maps were used to place all of these items at the various locations. Then we also use tables generated within the application where we could see 
Here, it's searched based on uh, venue location, being the RBC Center. We can see all of our, our location inventories, along with all of the items that are required at each location, such as table quantities, size, tent quantities, size, coolers, and everything required there. To conclude, I just wanted to, to provide an overview of the inventory items that were uh, collected. The following dashboard illustrates just a subset of the types of items that were collected, the number of chairs. So in 892 uh, inventory locations, there were 672 chairs. There was 158 tents and 156 um, tables. In some areas, that data collected was even more granular. For example, this shows the total number of tents, but the size of the tents was also recorded, along with the type of floor, if walls would be present, and the type of fixtures required. This granularity was essential for, uh, for sourcing the required items for each of the venue locations. <laughs> 